What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Channel. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? We are back once more with the weekly show. If you're new to this program, basically what I do, I take news from around the web. We sit here, we talk about video games, I give my takes, all that general stuff. Uh, if you're looking for timestamps, they will be in the description as well as links to every article we talk about. Sorry if I see if I seem a little flat. I mean, keep I've been trying to do this intro for a while, and I just I just can't I can't get the feel right. Uh, most mostly it's because I guess what we're what we're going to be starting with is is a really sad bit of news right here in U.S. Gamer uh, sources. Telltale Games closes majority of studio. Uh, the Wolf Among Us Two and Stranger Things canceled. Article by Matt Kim, like I said, of U.S. Gamer. Um, th this this is sad to me. I mean, really sad to me. Like I, I love Telltale. I love these kind of narrative adventure style games. Uh, this is also really kind of bad news. I mean, we'll get into it a little later because uh, we are kind of right in the middle of the final season of the of uh, not, I almost said the Wolf Among Us of um, the Walking Dead. So there's some there's some questions there. Like I said, I'll address those um, a little later. I mean, like I said, I mean this this just makes me sad because I, I absolutely love Telltale. I mean, this isn't the first time Telltale had some issues. Back last year, I think they laid off a good amount of employees. Uh, back then, I mean, we'll we'll cover this stuff in the article. Now, I guess part of, part of my whole confusion with this this issue is I keep seeing people saying that oh, the company's closing down. Yet, I I don't think that's technically true. I've seen you know there are reports, and again, it'll be stated in this article that uh, there's going to be like a small remaining group to start to continue working on a few projects for the company. I think it's about twenty five people. And uh, everybody's like, oh, they're closing down, they're closing down. I'm like, eh, they're still open in my opinion. I haven't seen anything officially from Telltale themselves saying we are ceasing operations. I have seen them say we've had massive layoffs. And then, you know, I've seen the former CEO of the company saying that this is a closure. I I've not seen any, any official announcement from Telltale saying, look, we're done. It's over. Um, I mean, we are hearing, we are supposed to be getting updates in the next little bit about their, uh, their current projects and you know, stuff like the Wolf Among Us 2, Stranger Things. Although from the way everything's looking, I, I think all the outlets who are reporting this, that the, they're, they're, those, those projects are canceled. And I think Telltale, if it's, how to put this, if it's not closed now, it, it's, it's in its death throes. It's, it's, it's going down. It's, it's, it's pretty, <laughs> it looks pretty bad. All right, let's uh, let's get into this article now instead of me sitting here and just saying shit. Telltale Games is closing down most of its game development today, according to multiple reports online. Telltale employees are also posting on social media that they are no longer employed with the company. An anonymous source familiar with the situation has told U.S. Gamer that Telltale's closure was going to be complete. So there we go. We have anonymous sources saying that 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 this is going to be a complete closure again again like i said I, I wait this is my thing i wait for the company itself to give me an official thing i i look I, these anonymous sources that's always that's good information that's good kind of like precursors to what we're going to get but i wait till the company itself makes the official statement on a project is canceled on the studio is shutting down on this or that so that's that that's why i say uh, I also I have an article on this over on the over on the website if you're interested. Um, I, that's why I don't say that it officially closed. That's just kind of my thing. But uh, I think I think I had to pull out like an entire paragraph out because I think I misunderstood something. But that's a sorry I, inside my own head. Let's see here. Uh, Telltale Games is a Bay Area-based video game company specialized in narrative adventures. The studio hit prominence with The Walking Dead Season 1 in 2012. The studio has since worked on video games based on Batman, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Minecraft. In 2017, Telltale laid off 90 employees in a restructuring of the company following years of mismanagement. In our report following the layoff, sources told us the following The Walking Dead Telltale suffered from a constant culture of crunch. That pushed employees uh, to release games as quickly as possible. In addition to overbearing management teams that oftentimes meddled in projects, the Telltale Tool uh, proprietary engine was prone to bugs, making development even more difficult. Oh, Telltale is currently in the middle of The Walking Dead, the uh, final season, and has previously announced a second season of The Wolf Among Us and a game based on the Netflix hit series Stranger Things. An anonymous source familiar with the company told US Gamer that a skeleton crew will remain at Telltale to work on Minecraft story mode for Netflix while The Wolf Among Us Season 2 and Stranger Things are effectively cancelled. 
and again, that's up, updated above. Well, I don't know why they had the first update down here, then update above. That's just, that's odd to me. Uh, let's see here. Um, update. The Verge uh, is reported that 25 employees will stay on board, presumably as part of a of the skeleton crew. Uh, we have reached out to Telltale that more information and we will update you. More information becomes available. Employees affected by the Telltale layoffs. There is currently a hashtag, hashtag Telltale Jobs trending on Twitter with video game companies offering assistance to affect uh, to affected employees. See here, uh, it's developing a uh, correction at 128. And an earlier report said that Telltale filed for bankruptcy. Sources say that bankruptcy was mentioned. We regret the error. Okay, so uh, so as far as we can tell, it's they're not bankrupt. All right, take a look at the second update. Like I said, it's weird that they do the upgrade down below and the upgrade, you know, all this. Uh, Telltale co-founder and former Telltale CEO Kevin Bruner has posted a blog calling the layoffs at Telltale a closure, seemingly confirming the state of the studio he co-founded. Um, or no, this is update one. It's weird. It's update, and then there's... The, the way this is structured is really hard for me to read. Uh, U.S. Gamer learned from multiple anonymous sources familiar with the layoffs at Telltale. The employees laid off today will not receive severance pay. There we go. Then update two with uh, Kevin Bruner uh, calling uh, calling things a, a closure. And again, this is where I, I sit here and go, former CEO, he co-founded the company. I don't think he's with the company anymore. From what I from what I've read, he left. Uh, there was a lawsuit. There's a there's an issue between him and the company. Uh, I'm not saying he's not to be trusted, but I do think those are factors to be taken into. Because again, with the 25 employees staying behind, I am still hesitant to to uh, definitively call this a closure. If that makes sense, I'm still I'm still holding off on that for now. Uh, let's see here. Update three. Telltale has issued a statement announcing that a small team of 25 will stay to. And I quote, fulfill the company's obligations to its board and partners. And quote, no word yet on Telltale's other games, but the company says it will explain in the coming weeks. Here's the full statement below, which we will read. Today, Telltale Games made the difficult decision to begin a majority studio closure. Following a year marked by uh, insurmountable challenges, a majority of the company's employees were. Uh, dismissed earlier this morning with a small group of 25 employees staying to fulfill the company's obligation to its board and partners. CEO Pete Holloway issued the following statement, and I quote, It's been an incredibly difficult year for Telltale as we worked to set the company on a new course. Unfortunately, we ran out of time trying to get there. We released some of our best content this year and received a tremendous amount of positive feedback, but ultimately that did not translate to sales. With a heavy heart, we watch our friends leave today to spread our brand of storytelling across the game's industry. Industry, end quote. Telltale will issue further comments regarding its production uh, or its product portfolio in the coming weeks. And see again, this this there's this weird language in here. It's this um, a majority of stu a majority studio closure. I, again, I, I the way I read that is the studio is not done. It still exists and it's still trying to do work. Again, though, I will hedge that and say. God, that doesn't look good. <laughs> I mean, that really doesn't look good um, for the company. I mean, I, I would I would say that they're they're looking to um, that the com uh, that the company is is probably going to go under quite soon. Um, I just disagree with a lot of the outlets who are saying that no, it's it's they're closing. Well, it's not, eh, I don't know. Tell me what you think. I I just I, I get a, I get a thing with maybe I'm maybe I'm being too. Um, too technical, and that's not the right word. Maybe I'm I'm, be, I'm being too um, focused on one word. All right, sorry. Uh, as information continues to come out on today's announcement, uh, the Telltale Games is closing, and particularly in light of Telltale's statement, there are new revelations to the situation at Telltale. And uh, let's see here. Uh, we previously reported that a skeleton crew will remain behind to uh, complete work on the Walking Dead final season. The information was inaccurate. Sources who wish to remain anonymous explained that, the that there is a skeleton crew at Telltale, but they will be working on the Minecraft story mode project for Netflix. In fact, the Walking Dead team was also laid off today, and the Walking Dead final season will not be completed. This matches with uh, the statement issued by Telltale Games, where the company promised to, and I quote, fulfill the company's obligation to its board and partners, end quote. Uh, our sources say The Walking Dead final season is set to end after the second episode launches next week. That's on the 25th, I believe. Um, so a lot of stuff there. Um, again, I, I, th I think 
you know, I, I think overall, I think Telltale's done. Uh, even it, no, it, like I said, I, I can try and fight the technicalities of the studios closing or whatever. It, it, the, we're pretty much we're not going to see The Wolf Among Us season two. I hold out no hope that The Wolf Among Us two, the Stranger Things project, that a sequel to Game of Thrones, um, to Tales from the Borderlands, any of the great Telltale projects, those are all done. I, I hold I hold out no illusion that those will come out. I hold out some hope that they're going to deliver on the promise. Uh, remaining two episodes of The Walking Dead because a I don't want to see it end on like some cliffhanger of the second episode. Uh, I say that as a fan and also as a guy who has spent money on this, I will be pretty pissed off if I don't get uh, a refund of any sort because I paid up. You know, I paid for four episodes and I only got two. And uh, you know, I mean, I guess you could argue I got what I paid. You know, I, I got episodes of what I paid for, but I also, like I said, I paid for four episodes. I, that's what you advertised, and that's not what you were delivering to me. So I, that opens some questions. Again, I'm not going to say that that tell I'm not going to say definitively that you know uh, that The Walking Dead is going to end after two seasons or after the second episode. Um, I mean, it, with uh, the sources that are telling this this site this, eh, that that puts a you know that uh, that's really concerning. But again, until I get the official word from the company, I'm going to hold out that hope that they finish that season. But uh, I, I'm again, I'm not going to say it definitively. But as far as I'm concerned, The Wolf Among Us two and all that other stuff that that stuff's gone <whistles> completely. And, it's, and again, that that's sad to me as somebody who's really looking forward to The Wolf Among Us two. I got super excited when I got announced. But again, uh, I I hold I hold zero hope that. That's going to end up being a thing, and yeah, I, I I really don't have much else to add. I mean, I think this article pretty much covers it. Again, I, I wrote one over on my website. You can go follow that. Link in the description. Um, really sad to see this happen to Telltale. I'm a big fan of their style. I'm a big fan of their games. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is that, as, as the title of the episode says, good night, sweet prince. Uh, I do wish best of luck to uh, any of the company, uh, you know, any, any of the developers who are working, who are now out of a job and all that. I wish them the best of luck. I hope that they uh, find a place in the industry and can continue to work. That's, um, yeah. All right. Well, that was that was sad. Now on to more sadness. <laughs> Projection of the PS Vita will end in Japan next year. Says Sony. Article Shibana R F I G N. Sony Interactive Entertainment has announced that manufacture of its handheld PlayStation Vita console will end in Japan in 2019. SIE uh, Vice President Hiroyuki Oda, that was really fun to say, shared the news with Famitsu via Gamatsu, uh, confirming that PS Vita produced pre, that PS Vita production. There we go. Will end in Japan next year with no plans for a successor anytime soon. And I quote, currently we do not have any plans regarding a new handheld device. End quote, he said. And I quote, in Japan we will manufacture PlayStation Vita until 2019. From there, shipping will end. End quote. This news follows a report from earlier this year that the company is set to end production of physical Vita cartridges by the close of, and I quote, fiscal year 2018, end quote, which is March 31st, 2019, although at the time, <coughs> excuse me, it was made clear that digital distribution of games on the platform would continue after the state. The announcement is a swan song for the console, which launched in Japan in 2011 and got a global release the following year. Historically, the Vita has performed remarkably well in Japan, which uh, a bigger install base than the PlayStation 4, uh, with a bigger install base, excuse me, uh, than the PlayStation 4 until uh, fairly recently. With Sony shutting the doors of the Vita in its home territory, where it thrived for seven years, it feels as though the handheld is on its way out for good. Yeah, it's it's really depressing to see something like this happen. Uh, I own a Vita. I love it. I mean, I bought mine secondhand, and uh, I really wish I would have supported it more, because I, I really do like the Vita. I, I like it for um, specific games. Like, Persona 4 Golden is phenomenal on the Vita. I love uh, I love the remote play. I love Danganronpa on my Vita. I, I play a lot of things on it, so um, I make use. Like I said, I, I really make use of the remote play. It's another. It was one of the big features for that thing that I think was really made it something. Now, um, yeah, it's it's like I said. I just it makes me sad that the Vita is kind of going is kind of going out. Um, 
I, I think the Vita might, it kind of suffered the way that the Wii U suffered. It was the Vita kind of released, and everybody kind of looked at it. It was kind of like, meh. It's basically just the same thing. It's kind of, like I said, like the Wii U to the Wii. Uh, like, just the Wii U just couldn't get off the ground. And I think the Vita was a, had a similar issue. Even though the Vita, when you compare it to, like, the PSP, is a massively, massively superior product. Again, with not only with that, not only with the remote play, but I think the games, the way everything looks, the uh, the dual analog stick, I think was phenomenal on the Vita. But that's again, not much I can add to other than it's it's really sad to see. And uh, we saw, we saw a mention of it in that article. We have a short one here on uh, Eurogamer. No plans for a Vita successor, Sony says. Uh, Sony has no plans for a Vita successor. Our article, Wesley and Pool, uh, Eurogamer. Sorry. Sony has no plans for a Vita successor. Uh, it said Sony Interactive Entertainment uh, senior vice president, like we said, Hiroyuki Oda, told Japanese magazine and yeah, like that. We basically covered that stuff. In fact, Oda confirmed 2019 last year Sony ships the Vita. Currently, we do not have. Sorry, I I just my my brain just shut off for like two seconds there. Do 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 do. Uh, so that's that for the Sony's Vita, which launched in Japan in uh, December 2011. Uh, the PlayStation Portable successor with its second analog stick was billed as a way to play console quality games such as Uncharted: Golden Abyss on the go, but it failed to take off in the way Sony hoped, and eventually uh, the handheld became the go-to place for smaller scale games. Uh, with the PlayStation 5 dominating the home console battle, the inevitable P PS5 waiting in the wings, mobile phones are encompassing, and all N and the Nintendo Switch doing a great job of being a Vita successor anyway. Uh, Sony clearly... I cannot... For some reason, I don't know what it is about Eurogamer. I have such a hard time reading their art. It's like the font they use or the size of it or something is really messes with my eyes. Sony clearly doesn't seem much need to return to the handheld market. Uh... See, I, I think I think he makes a good point there. I don't think Sony needs to return to the handheld market. I don't think it's a, it's a. I, I think Sony can do just fine in the home console thing. Um, I could definitely see where they don't want to compete with um, the Switch. I think the Switch is probably the biggest reason why Sony isn't going to make a successor to the Vita. I, I think Sony is going to stick to what works for them. I think they're going to stick to uh, and really put all their their eggs into the basket of the PS5. Not have a. Um, not what happened from, like, the PS2 going into the PS3 era. So, I mean, they had the massive success with the 4. So, I think they're going to really put their eggs in the basket and not screw up the release of the PlayStation 5. I think they're going to keep trying to keep this train rolling. And, I mean, hell, already with this year, I mean, what? I mean, we've already had three major um, three major exclusives on the, on the PlayStation. I mean, we had God of War, Detroit, Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man just broke Sony's... Um, fastest selling game ever i think 3.3 .3 million copies in like three days i think that beat the 3.1 that god of war had so i think so i mean i think it makes total sense that sony is going to be focusing on the home console market um i i love my switch but i i wouldn't put it up as a competitor against the playstation because I'd, I'd i'd keep my playstation over my switch any day of the week um I don't know. I, I, I keep going back and forth on this. Like, I totally get why Sony would ditch the handheld market and let Nintendo have it. But, man, I really would love... I'd love a Vita successor. I, I would absolutely love a Vita successor. Um, but, again, I, I get it, and I think that... And, like, I keep saying it. Um, I'm really scatterbrained today. Um, I totally get why they wouldn't want to compete with the Switch, because I think the Switch has done something wholly unique in the handheld market, being that kind of that dual handheld... Uh, home console sort of thing. So I think I think a Vita successor would just have too much competition in that, or it just it it wouldn't find space in the market. So I so I get it. It makes me sad, but I I definitely get it. All right, let's uh, let's move on here. Uh, an article on GameSpot: PlayStation Classic Mini features a 20 PS1 games. Pre-orders are live. Let's keep that uh, that ad from playing. Uh, article Eddie Macooch, GameSpot. Just don't play stupid ads. I don't need that. Uh, so, uh, man, I, I, I this this is such an interesting uh, <laughs> interesting move by Sony, in my opinion. With, I mean, it's like the article says, you know, with Nintendo enjoying great success in the field, Sony has announced its own mini classic console. 
Uh, the company has announced that PlayStation Classic, a mini version of the original PlayStation, it comes with 20 ge uh, generation defining games and it launches in December. It's available for pre-order right now. Uh, <laughs> it's just really funny to me to see Sony just blatantly copying what Nintendo did with their mini console. Um, I mean, again, it's it's funny, you know, knowing the history between PlayStation or, well, yeah, PlayStation and Nintendo to see them do this. Um <laughs> But it's just kind of like PlayStation just going, oh, they're doing that? All right, hold my beer. Here comes. <laughs> and we're just going to relaunch the PlayStation 1. Damn. Uh, a complete list of games has not been announced so far. Uh, the PlayStation blog has only confirmed five titles. Final Fantasy 7, Jumping Flash, uh, Ridge Racer Type 4, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. There's no indication of what uh, genres or companies will be represented by the remaining 15. The PlayStation Classic arrives on December 3rd. And that's a notable date. It's the day the original PlayStation launched in 1994. Jeez, I was... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do the math on how many months old I was, but I wasn't even a year old when, that came, when the OG PlayStation came out. Uh, the mini version is 45% smaller than the original PlayStation, and as you can see in the video, it captures the look uh, of the system is based on, including its controllers. It comes with an HDMI cable, a USB cable to power it, uh, the AC adapter is sold separately. The two controllers, the system costs $100, 130 Canadian, and 9,980 yen. You can pre-order it now. It's no surprise that Sony is getting into the classic category of plug-and-play mini retro consoles. Nintendo is currently dominating the market, and overall sales of plug-and-play consoles are up 400% year-to-date uh, in the U.S., with Nintendo leading the way with its NES and SNES classic device, Sony wants a piece of the category. Um, oh, and Sega announced, yeah, Sega's going to be doing the same thing. I, I, I love it when you see these companies start kind of blatantly copying each other. Why do we, why do you, I don't know. I, I don't get these, these mini consoles. I mean, like I said, maybe it was because I was I, I was I was I wasn't even a year old when the original PlayStation came out. I didn't grow up with the PlayStation. Uh, maybe maybe that's my maybe that's my thing. I mean, I, I grew up with uh, with an N sixty four, and I think the first console that I really got into video games with was my PlayStation two. So maybe that's why maybe that's why this stuff doesn't excite me like it excites a lot of people. But I I just I, I don't get it. I don't know. Moving on, though, I, I did find this funny, though. Article by Jonathan Dornbush of IGN. PlayStation Classic will not see post-launch games has no PSN functionality. With the PlayStation Classic's reveal earlier this week came the confirmation of five of the 20 games to be included in the nostalgic console, as well as what players would be getting for $99.99 price point. Still, some questions lingered about the functionality for the system and how it might differ from what we've seen in Nintendo's NES and SNES Classic mini consoles. Speaking to IGN via email, a PlayStation spokesperson confirmed that, uh, similarly to those consoles, uh, the initial launch lineup will be the full catalog for the PlayStation Classic. Um, and I quote, there are no plans to bring new content to the PlayStation Classic po uh, post-launch, and quote, a PlayStation spokesman said. See, that's weird to me, that you aren't going to, uh, maybe, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't, I, I can't, I can't think of a, of a reason why you wouldn't have post-launch content to this. Like, you wouldn't have downloadable games, you wouldn't have some semblance of PSN functionality in that, I mean, you'd see that with the Nintendo, uh, you know what I mean, you, you see that with the... Nintendo classics and you don't think you know you don't think it in your head hey let's get this functionality in our own mini console I, I don't know maybe maybe it won't hurt them but I I, I just I, I think that's an oversight along those lines PlayStation spokesperson confirmed the PS uh, classic will not have any online PSN uh, functionality or connect to PSN accounts or services, and sorry, Trophy Hunters, the games included have not been altered to include trophy support. As mentioned in the initial report, the PlayStation Classic will have the reset button on the console, which will allow players to save and suspend their current gameplay state of any included game. Players will be able to jump right back in and resume playing from where they left off. As for the lineup itself, PlayStation is not yet revealing the other games as of this time, uh, while IGN suggested 15 other PlayStation Classic titles were omitted, some like the, the Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon trilogies because of recent or upcoming remakes. 
Uh, while PlayStation didn't confirm or deny whether these remakes uh, affected the list, the spokesperson did offer some insight into the selection process. Let's see here. Uh, the 20 titles, or, and I quote, the 20 titles launching with the PlayStation Classic were selected due to their popularity among original PlayStation fans, the spokesperson told IGN. However, it is important to note that the title list is tailored to each region. Uh, as and as to whether the classic would affect any plans for other remasters or consideration for the downloading of older games on the PS4 or the future system, the spokesperson said, and I quote, no, pl uh, no PlayStation Classic is a separate initiative from any port or re-releases of older titles, end quote. While we wait for more of the PlayStation Classic, be sure to check out IGN's Jonathan Dornbush and Max Scoville discuss why they are uh, both excited but also have some reservations about the PS Classic below. Uh, more breaking news, IGN Beyond, blah, 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 blah. Um, I mean, I, I think right here, I mean, this this is really... <laughs> Ape Escape's probably going to be on that. I mean, we already got the announcement that we're going to see Final Fantasy VII. Let, let's check out what, what was going to be on it again. Final Fantasy VII, Jump and Flash, Ridge Racer, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. Um, yeah, again, it's just the games on here, like, already, like, the five announced. I mean, Final Fantasy VII's the big one. I've heard of Jumping Flash. I've never played it. Uh, I know, again, I know Ridge Racer. Ooh, it's an, here's Tekken 3, and here's Wild Arms. I, I, I just, I don't get excited by these, and I, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see what the other, what the other 15 games are, and the fact that there's not going to be another 15 games on there. Or, uh, excuse me, there's not going to be any games beyond those 15 games. Excuse me. I I, I don't know. I think that's a I think that's a bad move on Sony's part. Uh, I think that that's a that's a that was a dropped opportunity. And in all honesty, in my opinion, I don't think this is worth a hundred bucks. There you go. I said it. Get the get the pitchforks ready. I I don't think this is worth a hundred bucks. Uh, all right, we're gonna move on. We got some uh, Red Dead Two news and just a little bit of fun thing, a little fun thing that I found uh, today to close things out. But before we keep going, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up, use the bathroom real quick. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, let's get into this next uh, next article. This is a uh, article Adam Stewart on uh, Real Game Media. He's a neat little site. I suggest go follow him on Twitter. I I'm not uh, I don't know really really like the site. I think they're fairly new as well. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 multiplayer coming in November in the form of Red Dead Online. Uh, if that date seems a little weird, that wait a minute, in November, because Red Dead comes out in October. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we're not getting. Apparently, Red Dead 2 will not be launching with multiplayer. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Uh, exciting to think that we're just only uh, we're just over five weeks away from the release of Red Dead Redemption 2. The hugely anticipated game from Rockstar is due October 26, 2018, and it's certainly looking to be something special. To add to the excitement, Rockstar have revealed details of the online component of the upcoming Western, Red Dead Online, as it will be known, will not be available from launch of the game. Instead, it will launch in November 2018 as a public beta, perhaps anticipating the sheer volume of traffic the servers will get on release. Release. Rockstar made the announcement online today. Uh, today, we're excited to announce Red Dead Online, a new online connected experience set against the backdrop of Red Dead Redemption 2's. Excuse me. Red Dead Redemption 2's enormous open world, Red Dead, Redem uh, Red Dead Online, excuse me, is an evolution of the classic multiplayer experience in the original Red Dead Redemption, blending narrative and, uh, with competitive and cooperative gameplay in fun new ways. Using the gameplay of the upcoming Red Dead Redemption 2 as a foundation, Red Dead Online will be ready to uh, be explored alone or with friends, and will also feature constant updates and adjustments to grow and evolve this experience for all players. Okay, so in layman's terms, GTA Online. Uh, like, let's be entirely honest. That's what this is. It's gonna be. It's going to be um, GTA Online with horses. We're gonna see. We're gonna see similar things. Now, look, I, I wasn't a big fan of GTA Online, but it's, I'm not a big fan of online. Period. So I think uh, I, I. But I know how extremely popular it was. So I have no doubt that they're gonna they're gonna do a good job with this one. My my big fear, and I don't think they're gonna do this. Although one one I do find that I, I did find this funny. I can't remember who posted this on Twitter, but apparently, uh, Take Two did. Uh, they lost uh, their stock went down <laughs> after this announcement. 
but I, but I don't think this is going to be, oh, Red Dead Online is going to be bad. I, I think this article was spot on when it said, look, this is probably just to make sure that the servers and everything can handle all this, especially after the massive success that was GTA Online. So I, I, th- I think what... What was, I, what was I getting at? Oh, right. My 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 one big fear for this, and but I don't think they're going to do this, but again, it's just, it, it's sitting in the back of my mind, that they are going to make the story fuse with the online component. I don't think they're going to do that, and, and, I'll, and I'll explain the, the way that I, the way that I think this would be done. It's kind of like when we did the character switch in GTA 5, how it was, it was, left was... Left was Franklin, up was Michael, and right was Trevor. I think that's what it was. And down was your online character. We already know that in Red Dead 2, that where you're going to have this like moving camp where you and all of the, uh, you and the in the Vanderlyn gang are kind of you know your like little roving hideout. That is where I think that the on like the online sign in or whatever would be for Red Dead Online. That's that's it's kind of like a hub for. Uh, the multiplayer. So, my fear is while I'm trying to just hang out and do, you know, main st- you know, while I'm hanging out just playing the main game, that while I'm walking around inside the camp, there's going to be a bunch of just random people walking around and whatever in this camp while I'm trying to play the main game. I don't like that idea. I really don't just because it, it, it breaks something to me to see just hundreds of people just running around inside this area. The fact that in these kind of games, you can always tell who's an NPC and who's uh, another player character because the player characters kind of have this. Um, it's like it's like running around the the. Um, it's not the Citadel. The thing in the, the thing in Destiny. Why can't I remember the name of? Uh, um, it's been too long since I played Destiny. I can't remember what it's called. It's like running around the hub area in Destiny. You know, it's um, it, it's just. I find it distracting and irritating. I really hope that's not the direction they're going to go with Red Dead Online. I don't think that Rockstar would do that, but I I don't know. Like I said, it's a it's it, it's a fear that's in the back of my mind. I do hold out hope though that um I I, I do I, I don't know. Sorry, I'm god damn. I'm having trouble like staying on one on on one straight line of thought today. I know that's it's probably not it's not new. It's just really bad today. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this idea has really scared me. As soon as I as soon as I heard about the idea of that cam- that moving camp, I'm like, this is a really cool narrative thing. Uh, it's going to be really cool, like setting up uh, your not not setting up your story. Um, yeah, I, I guess that is that is right. It, it'll be really interesting from a story perspective. Um, going to the camp with Arthur and you know do you know it's uh we saw him like bring a deer back to camp like is that like how we like do we have to hunt food is that how we can like trade with people in camp you know that's where we get side missions I, I think it's gonna be really it's gonna be a really neat thing it's just I, I'm afraid that that online would maybe mess that up a little bit but again yeah, that's that's my that's my opinion on that Red Dead Online is planned for launch in November 2018 initially as a public beta with more news uh, to come soon. As with most online experiences of this size and scale, there will inevitably be some turbulence at launch. We look forward to working with our amazing and dedicated community to share ideas, help us fix teething problems, and work with us to develop Red Dead Online into something really fun and innovative. Access to Red Dead Online is free to anyone with a copy of Red Dead Redemption 2 on either PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. So there we go. Sounds like we'll learn more soon, but for now we'll have to go on the tidbit they've thrown so far. Not long to go uh, before we're riding around the wet in the West again. Do you have any thoughts? Blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, I like I said, I, I think that this is this is obviously a. I'm trying. I'm trying to think about uh, th- this is this is going to be like a test the servers kind of thing. There's a reason it's not launching. I I, I think it'll be ready by the time the full game launches, but they want to make sure everything's going to be good to go. And then even then, they they're still going to try and test everything and make sure it works. Uh, works the way they want it to work. So that's my that's my take. Uh, now we have a whole bunch of stills from uh, from GameSpot. Um, Edmund Tran was the one who created this. It, it, it's really cool because as we uh, as, you know as we go through, we get like a little a uh, little article as we go. Uh, a bunch of the game journals got a good look at the game. Uh, I've not been able to find any like um, public sort of uh, gameplay 
for this, so we're going to have to go through these stills, but we'll go through them and we'll make our uh, make comments and we'll read what's uh, the descriptions and everything. So here, a number of GameStop staff members recently were able to play a near final build of Red Dead Redemption 2, which releases in about a month's time, October 26th, on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Despite some initial familiarity as a Rockstar game, we discovered a wealth of new system, uh, features and systems. Once we scratched the surface, there are a lot of mechanics to tell you about, a lot of stuff that we haven't seen the full scope of, and uh, potentially a lot of things we haven't even seen yet. And that's without diving into Red Dot Online, which largely remains a mystery and won't launch until November, and even then only as a beta. But we're excited to share all the things we discovered in our time with the highly anticipated open world western so we've com um, compiled all the things we noticed in the handy gallery you'll learn uh, more about the nitty-gritty details about towns your horse your weapons customization arthur himself and more geez uh, again it's it's got to be the the either the font or the the size it's really hard to read this um you know, didn't GTA on didn't GTA Online also launch post after the game? I could be wrong with that, but I but I remember that also having kind of like a like a delayed launch. Some feel free to correct me on that, but I'm but I I remember that for some reason. Uh, we'll continue to upgrade uh, all that stuff on the Red Dead Redemption Two. Okay, let, let's just get into this. All right, so obviously neat little neat little little picture to start things off with. And can we go to image two? There we go. There we go. Okay, so uh, I just I, I like cows. Uh, okay, the entirety of Red Dead Redemption Two can be played in first person, much like Grand Theft Auto Five when it was released on PlayStation Four, Xbox One, and later PC. Like GTA Five, this feels uh, like a much more involved first person experience than a conventional FPS because your actions feel more weighty and animations are more confronting uh we were trampled by a horse at one point and it was awful um i i don't know i, I tried the first person mode in gta i don't like it I, I i don't know about the rest of you i i i don't like it. it not because it sucks but just because i just i i i just don't i i enjoy these games being third person that's just my thing uh this is uh, yeah you can disable the hud i think we've known this already but let's uh let's say hud is minimal by default only showing the mini map at the bottom left corner with meters fading in and out uh in as it becomes necessary an expanded hud option shows you larger mini map but that's also the option to turn everything off as well as the option to have a compass on the screen okay so again i think we i think we already knew that let's see here Jeez, I, I love the lighting. It's just you know, it's just it really gives that old west vibe to it. You know, the Vandal and gang riding, and I just I love the skies and everything. I mean, that that was something I really noticed out of um, Red, the first Red Dead. Like even uh, even uh, in, with backwards compatible on the Xbox, it, the thing looked freaking gorgeous. Uh, cinematic camera has new implementation. If you're familiar with Rockstar Open World games, then you're uh, probably familiar with the cinematic camera mode which can be triggered while you're driving and activates uh, when you're fast traveling in a cab. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the cinematic camera will now automatically trigger in certain instances, like the long journey to a mission location, and will frame the journey with a montage of shots that emphasize the landscape and traveling group. You can break out of it at any time, but it's a nice touch, and enjoying uh, filmic framing of what might otherwise be a standard journey as long as you hold X on the PS4 or A on Xbox One to keep pace with the pack like RDR1, uh, you can just sit back and enjoy the naturally flowing conversation scenery. Okay, see, that that's always been my thing, like doing that in GTA. It's just the um, having to drive with that cinematic camera. It's cool, but it's really hard to control. So as long as it'll kind of put me on autopilot, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. I think that would... See, I kind of... It, See, when he's talking about it, though, being shot like a montage, like that, I think that could be really cool, uh, depending uh, depending on the depending on the moments. I, I'm, I, I, I'm interested to see that in, in real life, but, yeah. Okay, so yeah, okay, so mini-map, all that. I, let's see here. Uh, we spent a lot of time in town exploring stores uh, where items could be examined and purchased off the shelf individually or via catalog. Oh, that's cool. 
Switching to first person, person, you can make Arthur manipulate the object in his hands as he takes a close look at it. This is how you'll interact with the environment uh, narrative objects like notes and photographs. You can also inspect your weapons, which is great for appreciating any customizations you've made to them. Ooh! That's a neat little... Uh, that's, a, that's a neat addition. Uh, we'll get into the weapons... Um, a little later, I mean, I've, I've heard some, apparently they're customizable and there's like weapon degradation, like if you don't like maintain them or something. I'm curious about that. I mean, we've also seen in some of the gameplay, <clears throat> um, Arthur got off his horse and then pulled the shotgun out from the bat, you know, from his saddlebags and then went into combat. And instead of, you know, he didn't, uh, it didn't have like the classic weapon wheel. Like he was shooting, you know, he was shooting with the shotgun drops it into one into his left hand, pulls out his pistol with his right and starts shooting. So it looks like uh, maybe there's more of a tactical way that you have to equip Arthur before you go into combat with like, it, like they're taking out the weapon wheel where you just magically have all the stuff. You actually have to pick and choose what you want to bring into combat with you. I, I think that could be really cool. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Again, this is entirely me guessing, but I, I've been, I've been kind of, Kind of, uh, kind of hoping that that's that's what it is, because I think they'll look really sweet. See, so, a uh, variety of businesses, activities, and secret stores. We spent time in town browsing the gunsmith and general store, sitting down for a bowl of oatmeal and playing some fine finger fillet. Rockstar told us that some stores would have more illicit secret businesses in the back rooms. Ooh, how do you? So my question is, how do you unlock those? Is it going to be like a side mission sort of thing, kind of like? Um, Yeah, I, I guess Yakuza would kind of be an answer to that because I mean I've on like with with the new Yakuza game I've been uh, or with Kiwami two that's what I should be saying um, I've done certain side missions and they have given me options to new vendors and which will maybe repair weapons or will do this or that for me um, so I'm so I'm curious how do you, how do you unlock that do you just spend enough time there do you have to threaten people like, what do you do. Boop, boop. Weapons are visible on your per Yes, that was what I was really, really hoping for. Uh, drawing on and learning from Max Payne 3, all the weapons Arthur carries will be visible on his body. You'll be limited to carrying two long guns, uh, or one long gun, or one long gun and one bow, two sidearms, a knife, a lasso, and a bunch of throwables. Uh, when we switch weapons in the demo, Arthur would carry his rifle in his left hand while he would use the pistol in his other. Oh, that's so freaking cool. Can I can I get the can we can we get the picture to to load? There we go. Okay, yeah. So he's got one there. He's got it on his back. So you can carry two pistols and knife. Okay, I like. I see. I like that. Again, it's kind of that idea of like tactical. Like uh, you have to load your guy out tactically, as opposed to just having that weapon wheel and knowing that I just have this magic backpack filled with guns. Uh, kill cam that changes depending on your honor. Again, why won't the flipping pictures load? There we go. Yeah, we've seen this one in the demos when you just when somebody just boom shot him right the chin. That's a kick-ass beard too. Uh, visible weapons aren't the only Max Payne three DNA in the game. When you take out the final opponent during a gunfight, a kill cam will frame that final blow. Uh, this will change depending on Arthur's moral standing if you've been a naughty cowboy. <laughs> it just sounds wrong. These kill cams will be gorier. If you've been upstanding and honorable, they'll be framed in a more heroic fashion. Okay, that could be really cool. Um, I mean, I, I like the idea of like the gory finisher, but um, I, I'm not sure how I want to play my or my Arthur Morgan. If I want to play him more, more of like a dastardly character, if I want to play him more of a... More of a, a, a hero. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm taking suggestions. Let's see here. Um, speaking of heroic behavior, if you want to go the more non-lethal route, it's possible to shoot weapons out of enemy hands. Not only that, but you can even shoot directly at their weapons and break them. This, seem, uh, this seems like a handy technique if you're looking to be an outlaw with a heart of gold or opposed to a straight-up cold-blooded killer. How oh, the flipping... What is happening? There we go. That 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 that's gonna be my new phone background. I love that. That's a that's a neat picture. Jeez, we're only an image ten out of thirty freaking five. <laughs> uh, Dead Eye has five levels now. Red Dead Redemption's version of Bullet Time slowdown. 
uh, style slowdown returns in the sequel and it has more levels to it. We were able to deduce that level one allows for slowdown, level two allows you to paint targets and unleash a barrage of shots, and level three allows you to manually pick your shooting points. However, Rockstar also mentioned that you have the ability to highlight critical hit points with higher levels, which will come in handy uh, for making clean kills when hunting animals. Oh, that's neat. So, like, I can deliberately make a heart shot or something whenever whenever I want. Um, see, that was that was one that was one of my least favorite times in the original. Um, in the original Red Dead, was when you couldn't pick your shots in Dead Eye. Like I liked it when we could slow down and just you know shoot, um, or the uh, or the the third level where you could you pick your targets, then you would fan the hammer at them. But I would hate the uh, but I hated the whole uh, you just went um, you just crossed over a guy and that's where it chose to shoot. I'm like no, I want to shoot him in the head, not the uh, not the shoulder. That was that was always really irritating to me in Red Dead. Alright, here's what I'm what I've been really curious about. Apparently we can customize our guns. Like it like is it only like a like a fit like a physical customization like this? Like can we like trick them out like visually or like can we give them more power or something? In Red Dead Redemption 2, you're able to examine environmental objects in great detail, and you can do the same to your weapons by clicking the right analog stick from the weapon wheel. Uh, that's handy because it lets you admire the customization you can perform on them at gunsmiths, like personalized engravings and leather wraps. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, like we're not putting a scope on our pistol, but you know, can I uh, like increase the damage or like? So I'm I'm gonna guess the customization's only gonna be cosmetic, which I like that idea. It kind of gives you that uh, that your guns are kind of your weapon. And okay, and, and we also know that there's going to be, and from that we know that there's going to be a uh, there is going to be a weapon wheel. But again, I like the idea that it's more like you equip your weapons, not necessarily you just have a oh you got a shotgun, a rifle, uh, uh, uh you get what you're, you're carrying like three shotguns, four rifles, two sniper rifles, a whole bunch of pistols. You know, it it, it makes it a little bit more realistic. I like that idea. And on to this one. Yeah. Jeez, I, I don't know. I just I love the look of Arthur Morgan. Aside from gun customization, you can craft special kinds of weapons and ammo. For example, you can craft Molotovs and split point bullets. This should make uh, the going easier when caught up in firefights. So well, let me guess: a split point bullet is it's gonna like come out of the barrel and split into two bullets? And like, can I hit multiple people? That that could be really interesting. Um. See, I, th I think this is the one that I found the most, w w one of the most interesting bits of, of this this kind of news drop. Uh, you need to take care of your weapon in Red Dead Redemption 2. You have the option to clean it, which is incredibly important uh, to do regularly because your guns can rust and jam due to um, disrepair and environmental conditions. Uh, this one's sure to be a controversial feature in Far Cry 2, which also featured gun jamming uh, was anything... Uh, if Far Cry 2, there we go, which also featured gun jamming, uh, was annoying. What was anything to go by? For some reason, I can't read. Um, yeah, I think I think it's a cool idea, especially how it's based on environmental factors too. So I guess if you're like in a like in water a lot, your gun will end up probably rusting more. That's a that's a neat idea. Uh, my my only fear is how fast do they degrade? Because I mean, like that's uh, that was like one of my big things with um, oh crap um, uh, uh, with Breath of the Wild was that your weapons degrade super quick. Uh, it, it I don't know it, it just it kind of I'm like sweet I finally got this gun and or I, I finally got this cool sword and it's broken. You know I I'm hoping that it's uh, it's manageable. You know it makes sense. So, like I'm not cleaning my guns every 15 seconds. But uh, I, I like the idea on its face. I'm just I'm curious to see about its implementation. Let's see here, ba -ba -ba. Um, by having your gun unholstered and holding up on the D-pad, you can fire warning shots into the air. This is handy for intimidating people, scaring off animals, or generally being a rowdy buffoon while you're riding around. <laughs> just ride into just ride into town, just shooting up in the air. What the flip? All right. There we go. 
That was a little, well, was a little weird. Shooting is not your only option. Try talking. Aiming at people with your gun holstered will give you access to a contextual menu, which lets you chat to people in the world. Oh, right. I, I, I read a little bit of a of a uh, of an IGN article about this. You often find uh, the option to verbally diffuse or agitate situations with other inhabitants in the world, and these interactions seem quite fluid and naturally uh, during our short time with the game. For example. Uh, when a carriage rode past us, we had the option to call out for them to stop, greet them in a friendly manner, or antagonize them. We called out to the carriage and were then given the option to hitch a ride, among other things. But we took, uh, but we took too long to make a decision, and the driver rode off. We called out again, and Arthur's dialogue was more unsure and desperate. Oh, okay, that's neat. And the eyewitness system returns. The eyewitness system means that nearby onlookers to a crime can report you to a lawman, and like in the first Red Dead Redemption, the effect of eyewitnesses can be mitigated if you manage to catch with them and either kill or bribe them uh, before they report the crime in the sequel. However, you have more options. You can speak to them in various uh, temperaments in an attempt to intimidate or convince them not to report you, or you can beat them like a heartless jerk. Yeah. See here, uh, melee combat. Oh, thank God! Melee combat in the first one sucked. Uh, we weren't able to get into the mechanical intricacies of this during our demo, but Rockstar reps mentioned that melee combat has been expanded. We were shown a fist fight where Arthur used grapple moves, blocks, and a variety of different punches to knock out his opponent. Um, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be something similar to, um, oh come on, uh, to GTA Five. In GTA 5's melee was actually pretty good. I actually really enjoyed uh, fist fighting in GTA. Like, I, I'd just go out and just start random fist fights in the streets. <laughs> oh, actually, my favorite thing to do was go to the um, uh, go to the beach and where all those all those weightlifters are <laughs> and just start a fist fight and just beat and just beat everyone down. It was really fun. Uh, let's see, hunting is more realistic, laborious, and confronting. Uh, the ability to hunt animals and sell. You know what? I I, I, I want to see this picture. It's I love this picture of of um, Arthur carrying the deer on his back. Come on, load the picture. Yeah, I, I, I there's something about that that I just I love that in context. It's really sweet. The ability to hunt animals and sell their meat and pelts returns, but with a more realistic and therefore more confronting present uh, presentation. Once you successfully kill an animal, you can skin it, but where Red Dead Redemption's skinning animation didn't focus on the animal, Red Dead Redemption 2 most certainly does. You see Arthur pull out his knife, uh, pull his knife out, get onto his hands and knees, plunge the knife into the poor beast, uh, carve the pelt from its flesh, peel it off the body, and roll it up into a bundle. You'll also uh, certainly wince the first time you see it. That's questionable. Arthur actually carries the pelt now, and he'll need to store it on his horse uh, to free up his hands. I I really like that idea. I, that's really cool. Uh, similarly, to get the meat off a hunted animal, you'll manually have to pick up the bloodied carcass uh, and carry it to a butcher. We had to load a hunted deer on our horse and ride it into the nearest town where we had the option of getting it chopped up into cookable components or simply selling it whole. I love the ever-living crap out of that idea. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it to an love it to infinity. It's just I, I know that's probably gonna seem really tedious, but I it's such a neat idea to put that in this game. All right, let's continue here. Uh, time is cruel. Rockstar reps wanted us to know that these meat components had an expiration date. Time would eventually take its toll on both the fresh pelt and the carcass would start to rot and attract vermin, reducing its value and making us ge uh, generally unpleasant to be here. Oh, that's cool. So we so we take it and we actually have to sell it quick. Otherwise, we're carrying around rotten crap. Oh, that's an interesting. Like, is there a... Is there a uh, it, it, like, like, is there a way to, uh, to, I'm trying to think how to put, like, to preserve the pelts, or do we actually have to take it and sell the pelt quick? Um, I, I mean, like, I assume with the meat, like, we can turn it into jerky or something, but the, the pelt is what has me interested. That's a, that's an interesting thing. It's a stupid looking horse. Uh, time also has an effect on Arthur's hair, which will grow longer over time. Customizing Arthur's haircut and facial hair styling is also dependent on length, since you're allowed to cut things shorter, but won't have access to anything that requires more hair. A more realistic take uh, on the personal grooming compared to GTA 5. 
going for the more um, the Witcher approach. That's that's what that reminds me a lot of. It's it's very similar to the Witcher. As time goes, he'll need to shave because his beard will grow longer. Yeah. Sorry, sorry that this is this is taking so long. I, I just I find this really interesting, and like I said, I, I really wanted to go over this with you guys because I, I really haven't done like a deep dive into uh, to Red Dead Two. Uh, time to, uh, time also affect towns over the course of the game. While exploring, we noticed a half-constructed uh, building, and we're told that these would eventually become new storefronts as days passed. Oh, that's interesting. So, if I'm, I can't, th I can't think any anything off the top of my head that would affect that, but that could be really interesting, huh? The fact that if, if an item is not available in a town now, it might be available in the future. That's a, that's a neat take. Uh, NPCs will certainly react to the stink of your rotting deer corpse if you've been around it too long or just haven't taken a bath in a while. Arthur needs to get clean and change his clothes every once in a while since town folks may refuse to talk to him. Uh, or to, to uh, Words are hard may refuse to talk or serve him based on his appearance. Having a lot of blood on your jacket doesn't attract the best reactions. Eh, fair enough. Layer your clothes. Rockstar Raps explained that the game's clothing customization options will be comprehensive. Each character will have different sets of clothing with weather conditions. Uh, while customization would allow layering and minor adjustments, like the option to roll up your sleeves or tuck your pants into your boots, it's unclear whether outfits will have perks like RDR1, but we know the type of clothes you'll wear will affect Arthur's performance. For example, if you wear a weighty jacket during a hot summer day, your running stamina will take a big hit. That makes sense. God damn, load the flipping pictures. Can't tell if it's just my junk of a computer or what's going on. There we go. Uh, we started a side quest during our time with uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, and the mission giver handed Arthur a camera. This camera could be used anytime via your inventory, and yes, the first thing we did was take a selfie. I'm going to vomit. These aren't uh, arm-out handheld selfies, though. The mode is tilted self-portrait, and will frame Arthur's whole body as if the camera was set up on a tripod. You'll be able to adjust expressions and poses, too. Uh, expect to see a whole bunch of self-portraits depicting Arthur squatting in front of various things. I really really hate photo modes in games. And I, and I don't know why. I just don't like them. Or I don't get why people freak out about them. But uh, whatever. I'm Maybe I'm just being an asshole. Arthur's core meters are health, stamina, and deadeye. And you'll need to keep him fed with snacks and meals to keep, him, uh, to keep his well-being topped up. If your health or stamina falls below a certain level, Arthur will express dizziness, he'll have to, uh, trouble walking, and his vision will be blurry. Oh! Arthur can carry snacks on him for a quick boost, but eating meals in towns and areas and in camp are more uh, are more effective. That's a neat... Th Ooh, I didn't think that they'd include, like, eating in the game. That's interesting. Oh, my God, they're going... Oh, son of a bitch. They're, go they're, go they're going full... They're going full on Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. <laughs> You sure you need to eat, but don't overdo it. Arthur can both lose and gain weight, much like Carl Johnson and Grand Theft Auto. Oh my God, I haven't read that. Oh man, all right, uh, go me for making that for making that that comparison. Presumably, you'll also lose weight by performing strenuous physical activities like sprinting. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't expect them to put that put either of those factors into this game. That's cool. I really, I, god damn it, I love the, the, the light, the fog, oh, it's fucking awesome. Uh, in our demo, we noticed the stamina limit could be raised by running. That's just similar progression system to previous Rockstar games, where your skill with something increases the more you perform the action. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised that we're going to see something like that. I mean, that was, that was what I really liked about uh, GTA V, was increasing the, the skills of the different characters. So I'm glad to see that kind of return or hopefully return in some way, shape, or form. Your horse will have its own set of health and stamina meters, and like Arthur, you'll need to keep it fed as well. You'll also need to keep it clean and brushed, since it uh, can become less effective. Excuse me, jeez. And you can pet your horse, uh, which acts as a mechanism to calm it down after it's been spooked. Uh, we are told that bonding with your horse uh, by caring for it 
and writing it regularly can unlock additional skills and improve uh, responsiveness. During our hands-on, we were able to rear our horse on its hind legs, perform drifts to change direction quickly. Apologies to equestrian enthusiasts and move our horse precisely by performing um, dr dressage techniques. I don't know what the hell that is. I, I don't... Uh, oh my god, the horse is poop! I'm sorry, I got distracted. Uh, I don't know horse things, but... Oh, the horse is poop! Uh, you can bond with multiple horses and, uh, and stable them in different locations around the world as different breeds will be better um, suited to certain situations. A Clydesdale War Horse, for example, would be more suitable in uh, a battle than the Tennessee Walking Horse, which is more of an all-rounder. And yes, they poop. Yes, the horses poop. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we've we've seen this in uh, in some of the already released gameplay that we, we know that we can have multiple horses. Uh, we have the fact that the horses... that There are actually, like, horse stats... That, I mean, there was kind of like a bonding thing with your horse. Like, the more you rode it, the more its stamina went up. But it looks like this is actually going to be even more in-depth. That the more you hang out with your horse and the more that you take care of it, it's like it's kind of like Roach. It is his horse. And I like the idea that, you know, like, we have to brush it and clean it and all that. Again, it, it's, it's little details that I think a lot of people would see. Oh, that's like that's so dumb and tedious that I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't wait to do it. Because I think it's so... <laughs> it's so dumb but i'm like i want i want it i want this oh see so here uh because arthur can only carry a limited amount of weapons your horse also acts as your storage being in close proximity to your horse will give you access to your entire arsenal but you'll need to transfer guns onto your person if you decide to stray you can move your horse without mounting it thankfully by grabbing the reins and leading it on foot uh the gamut of horses uh interactions is increased by Red Dead Redemption 2's new contextual menu by holding L2 with your gun holstered and aiming at your horse. You can also rob other people's saddlebags. Just make sure no one is watching. Okay. So so I was right. There, there is kind of a... a um, which... Trying to, trying to figure out how to, how to get to the next picture. Um, that, that is... Con that is kind of confirmation on what I've been wondering is that... Uh, do we have to kind of load Arthur out before we leave, you know, our horse and go into battle? So I, so I was correct on that. That, that makes me, it makes me happy that I'm not completely blind. <laughs> uh, the af let's see here. Side missions are potentially more involved. The aforementioned side quest was a multi-part mission, uh, that we weren't, that we weren't allowed the time to pursue in it. A biographer fed up with his drunken subject asked Arthur to track down a number of, uh, famed gunslingers to ask them about who was the best. Uh, with the strong insinuation that we would have to duel them ourselves, because Arthur's the best, come on. Uh, we were handed a number of photographs and of the targets, each with some handwritten notes on the back. Physically analyzing these notes and photographs was likely the key to narrowing down our search, uh, reminiscent of the treasure maps from the first Red Dead Redemption. Okay, I, I like that idea, because I think the, the side, I mean, the, the yeah, what were what the hell were they called? The stranger missions in the first one were fun, but I like the idea that these they're going to get a little bit more. No, they're they're a little bit more than just kind of little funny guys that are out there in the world, you know. That they're they're actually like missions and quests. Uh, your camp will not wait for you. We were told uh, that the members of the game who reside at the camp will come and go, and finding out where exactly they've gone from others will be the basis of a number of quests and side quests. Oh, that's cool. We found that the day and night cycle will also affect who you're able to interact with at camp. For example, where look, uh, we looked for our gang's cook to try and fix up some of the deer we had prepared. Uh, we had prepared earlier, but he was sleeping, and though we prodded him awake, he uh, we didn't feel mean enough to make him cook. I would have, especially if the uh, the deer is about to go bad. Uh, the <coughs> excuse me, the stockpiling of supplies like these is just one of the ways you can affect camp morale. We're told the camp morale is an optional mechanic, but keeping it raised can provide Arthur with additional supplies and bonuses. Okay, so we can hunt deer and bring it back to camp. Oh my god! I I I know these are all just totally side stuff that has nothing to do with the story, and I'm usually a big story guy. But I mean, this game, I will get. I'm probably going to end up getting lost for. I am probably going to hunt for hours straight, doing absolutely nothing but just hunting animals and just living on the frontier. I, oh my god, I can't wait. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh, Rockstar told us that if available gang members will offer 
uh, that if available, gang members will offer to join you on free roam activities, giving you access to the same kind of assistance saw in the story missions, like asking them to go ahead and take out an enemy. Ooh. You can also spend time talking to the gang members at camp, including Red Dead uh, 1 protagonist John Marston, and even button to conversations midway to add your two cents. Unfortunately, due to the time of day in our demo, we didn't have many of those opportunities to explore. Can we, uh, can we, can we, can we talk on, uh, can, can we talk to, uh, to Marston's wife? Unlike John Marston, it's possible for Arthur to swim, though it's not worth, uh, it's worth noting that he isn't all that great at it. Fair enough, but at least we can swim, because I think the, I think the rule of thumb of, uh, with John Marston was, if he gets, um, if the water goes above his hat, you're gonna die. <laughs> Uh, when you're tracking and hunting animals, you can activate what's called the eagle eye system. This display key uh, details in the environment that can help you close in on nearby game. Oh! It can also be used to see the scent coming off of your body, a handy detail you can use to determine whether or not you should approach the animal uh, who might catch on to your presence. See, that is that is one thing that I am kind of curious about the hunting is they say it's in, it more... In, it, it's more... Uh, Involved than oh there's an animal I'll just shoot it in the face. That's kind of how Red Dead One was. With this Red Dead, I'm really curious to see what it's what more of it's going to be like with the uh, the actual hunting, you know, like with your scent and tracking and all that. I think uh, Assassin's Creed Three initially was showing that it was going to do something similar to that, but just in the end, I don't think that made it into the game. But I like the idea. Last but certainly not least, we noted that while you can easily lose your hat in the midst of a shootout, Arthur can swap his hat for any other hat that just happened to fall off someone else's head. Might know it doing of your own. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you can't wear uh, the hat you want, what is the point of even playing? <laughs> I I like that. I well done. I I, re I really like that article. Like I said, I think that I know that was that was really long. It took a lot of time. But uh, I, I, I had some fun with that, um, especially after kind of the uh, the telltale topic at the be beginning kind of kind of made me sad. Nah. Either way, uh, we're going to end this on a, on a little bit of, again, light news uh, by Michael. I'm not I'm not going to even try uh, of IGN. Apparently, the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy is coming to consoles and steam. I'm actually excited for this. I am not going to lie here. Uh, the original three Ace Attorney games are coming to the Switch, a PlayStation. 4. Oh my God, it's coming to the Switch! Oh, I'm so pumped. I I know what I know. This is going to be a Switch game for me. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm getting excited. The trilogy of Ace Attorney games was announced uh, during the Ace Attorney panel during the Tokyo Game Show and will include updated HD visuals. The trilogy was originally released on 3DS back in 2014. Uh, the compilation includes the original game, Justice for All, and Trials and Tribulations. Expect to see the trilogy launch in early 2019. Capcom also previewed uh, the second season of the Ace Attorney anime with stories uh, focusing on cases from the third game. The Ace Attorney Orchestra was also confirmed to return in 2019. Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice was released in 2016. Um, <clears throat> less central entry in the Phoenix Wright Saga. Um... You know what? I, I've played bits and pieces on my sister's DS of past Phoenix Wright, uh, Phoenix Wright games, but um, you know what? Actually, I don't think the one that I played actually starred Phoenix Wright. It was a new guy. Had a stupid haircut. I'm not saying the Phoenix Wright doesn't have a stupid haircut, but you know what I mean. Um, I can't remember who the hell he was. Either way. Uh, I, I really like the ideas of the games, you know, kind of that here's the evidence you have to piece together, piece together. It reminds me kind of like of, uh, of, of a more childish Danganronpa, if that makes sense. I, I know people who absolutely love Ace Attorney. Um, so I, I'm excited that I finally get a chance to like play the main games. Um, and uh, definitely I'll be playing on the switch and you know what? Hell, I'll probably play it on the channel then. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's all the news we have for you this time. Uh, like this article said, uh, Tokyo game show has been going on. If you guys see any news from that, please hit me up, uh, send me links, send me videos, anything like that. Always happy to get that stuff uh, to show it on the channel. Uh, if you have any uh, opinions on any of the articles, eh, anything like that, please go uh, into the comments, tell me what you think. Uh, as always, please don't be a jackass about it. I had a problem last week about that. Um, you know, I, I had to end up mute the guy. I had to end up muting the guy. I, I don't like doing that shit. I really don't. But if you're gonna come in and just be an asshole, uh, I'm gonna do the the in my opinion the YouTube version of what I do in real life, which is just turn and walk away and not engage.
that's just that's just how I am. I'm happy to hear constructive criticism. Happy to hear to see uh, your opinions on anything. Happy to see uh, any like anything like that. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, stay safe. Have a great week. Um, this week's been a been a kind of an odd week for me. Um, just personally, don't want to get you guys down. But uh, yeah, like I said, have fun. Hug somebody. Hug a friend. All that, you know, spread the love and whatnot. Thanks for watching. Facebook, Twitter, the website, minds.com. Links, all that stuff is in the description. Like, comment, you're not already. Please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more next time. Till then, guys, my name's AJ Gels. This is the Umpire Gaming Channel. One more time. Thanks for watching. I'm out.